Next up, number 20. Um, big fan of this guy, Lockie Plowman. He's, uh, he's a guy that is often maligned by, by myself. Uh, years ago, I, uh, I didn't really see the value in him. I was a little lost with what, he, what his role was. I didn't know where he was placed. He's grown on me. Um, my penny drop moment was when he finished third in the best and fairest, and I heard the way um, the players spoke about him. I heard the way Cripp spoke about him. I heard the way David Teague speaks about him. I hear the way Dale Amos speaks about him. Um, he plays a crucial role for this team. Um, and uh, he, he often goes underappreciated. He, he often finds himself being a bit of a bit of a whipping boy. Um, Marcus, where are you at with, with Lockie Plowman? And, and you guys at home, where are you at with Lockie Plowman? Yeah, I, I still feel like he's, he's a pretty underrated player. I know he's, he's much maligned and he's a bit of a scapegoat when things go wrong. And, you know, especially after those bad losses, he's usually one of the first players that, that fans jump on. Um, and yeah, you know, I've, been, I've fallen victim for that as well. But um, I, I, do, I do find him still, he's, he's crucial to our defensive setup. I feel like he, he plays a very significant role down there. He's, he's done some great jobs on, you know, players like Tom Papley, Charlie Cameron, these players. He's, um, yeah, I find him very important. But I think the thing with, with Lockie, he just needs to bridge the gap between his best and worst. I feel like his bad games are bad and then his good games are, are unbelievable. So if you can bridge that, I think that's that's his that's his main flaw at the moment. Um, other than that, he, he does things that aren't too flashy, which is why people don't really notice him too much or they sort of just like, oh, he didn't do too much this game and they just scapegoat him. So, yeah, for me, I feel like he's still an underrated player and, and, and crucial to our to our defence. Yeah. He, I think it's probably, uh, look, I don't know what it is. I, I have a feeling it's got something to do with, because like you said, he's not flashy. He does a job. Uh, he does the the job that, you know, no one really would put their hand up to do, uh, but he does it. Like he takes the, takes the smalls. He always plays on, you know, the Michael Walters and he does a really good job on Michael Walters every year. Like you said, the Tom Papley's. And then on the other end of the spectrum, he finds himself on a, on a Jack Darling or an Oscar Allen um, or an Oscar McInerney for that point. He, he takes the smalls, he takes the talls. He's a, he's a wee, he's in a bit of a, he's an interesting height. He's almost got the height of a midfielder, um, but he's a key position defender. He's a, he's a third tall. I think he's, he's the best way to, to, to label him. Um, but uh, I think, I think we, I think as the years go on, I'm hoping that we're going to appreciate him a little bit more. Um, I think maybe it's got to do with, well, he's not new to the club anymore, but I think every year that you play, you endear yourself more and you have more memories in the, in the Guernsey and, and hopefully um, that rubs off on the fans. But I, I wanted to run you through the quote that um, um, it was Dale Amos, the backline coach, uh, what, he, what he said the other day about Plowman. And he said, Plow is someone who since Christmas has been pretty flawless with his preparation. He's doing all the sessions and he's a player that makes us better when he's in the team. He helps his teammates around him as well as getting the job done against his opponent. Opponent, He's had a nice preparation. Last year was the first time he had a full preseason and he's backing that up with another one this year. The continuity has been really good for Plough and what has stood out is his leadership, particularly in helping others around him, has really grown. He's, um, that's really important for us as a playing group. So it's, again, further to your point, the things that we don't see on game day and the things that we don't see um, during the week uh, are the things that he is obviously um, leaving a lasting impression at. So um, how, how do we learn to appreciate the plough? Uh, it's, it's a great question. Um, I mean, you just got to look at his versatility. As we said before, he plays on these tours, he plays on the smalls. And, um, you know, if the player that he's playing on doesn't, doesn't have a good game or um, is super quiet, like I just remember I, that, that, Tom Papley game stands out for me where he just completely shut him down. He was one of the All-Australian small forward or in, in line for an All-Australian small forward role at that stage of the season and completely shut him out of the game. So I think if we can see the impact that he's having and um, you know, stamping the influence of these key players, I think that's how we're going to appreciate him. Otherwise, yeah, he's, he's otherwise you're not, you're not going to really notice him too much because, um, yeah, he, and he also doesn't do a lot of media stuff too. So a lot of, you know, non-Carlton people wouldn't even think of him in, in, in a high way like some of us do. So, um, yeah, I think we just got to look at that role that he plays. And if he can, you know, keeps his opponent to a, a quiet game, then he's, he's done his job. Yeah. Man, there's this notion about Marchbank. Um, and I'm seeing it a lot in comments all over, all over the place about how, oh, well, if Marchbank's fit, then we can't play Plowman and Marchbank. Um, where do you sit on that? Do you believe that's the case? 
Oh, it's, it's a really good question. I see, I see March Mac as that, as that player that probably plays more on the talls. Um, you know, where Plowman can, can play on the smalls. So I don't think Marchie has that. I think he's more of a, of a tall matchup, um, especially with his leap and his intercept marking. Um, yeah, playing that, I don't know. I, don't, I can't even remember the last time they even played in the same team. So it is a hard question. Um, but for me, I'd probably, I'd probably rather Plowman at the moment, just because we're so stocked in that, in that tall department. So um, yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's a tough one. Yeah, no, mate, they're good. They're good. They're good headaches to have. That's what we want to be having. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's get through some comments. Plow, this is from Pommy. Plowman's a beast, man. Legit, the ultimate clubman. Towels up more smalls than Gargamel. <laughs> Playing the extra down back is the toughest gig in footy. Made Papley and Walters look like a pair of Smurfs. <laughs> Graham wants to know. Um, well, Graham's asking the question. He says he likes Lockie, but how does he fit into the back six if we have no injuries? Uh, Aaron says, Lockie, I'll tell you what, this bloke never misses a game. Pretty consistent. One or two bad moments, a la the Robbie Gray mark and goal. Everybody comes for him. Give him a break. Love it, Aaron. Um, we've got uh, Jimmy Lazar says, every club needs a whooping boy and plowman is ours. Not sure why, but needs to stop having up and down games and be more consistent week in, week out. Uh, Terry Mastoros believes that he gets better every season and he's always consistent. Um, OJ Dumsday says, I believe adding Sardin Williams, guys that can run and have speed will make him look better. Too many slow guys around him last year. That's an interesting point. It's a very interesting point. Um, all of a sudden, you've got a handball option to Adam Sard if you don't know where you're kicking the ball. Uh, and that's something we haven't had. I mean, Simo's obviously been a great servant to the club, but he lost his speed years ago. Um, so he wasn't really someone that you could use as a as a sort of, you know, break, cl- break glass in case of emergency situation. So that's going to be something, um, that's going to, be something to, um, to look forward to this year. Uh, Shad says that Plowman gives me this, the full spectrum of emotions in footy. He, he really does. He really does. He has a few of those uh-oh moments. Um, yeah. But at the same time, he looks to, he looks to um, make amends. I think, I think Liam Jones is not so different in that as well. He can have some of those, um, he can have some of those moments too. Exactly right. And, you know, majority of us love Jonesy. So I think it, it, it's it's part and parcel with, with some players. So you just got to accept the good with the bad sometimes. But yeah, he just needs to bridge it. He's best and worst, I think, for bridge that cap. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I'm, I'm pumped for Lockie this year. I think we're, I think this is going to be the year where he gets a little bit more recognition than in years gone by. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So that has been Lockie Plowman for season 2021.